Have you ever parked in one of those underground parking garages? Those things are some of the creepiest places in the world. It's confined, it's dark, and you never know who or what could be hiding in between the cars and pillars. Well, one unfortunate woman finds herself in an awkwardly terrifying situation after she parks her car in one of these parking garages. Enjoy this allegedly true scary story. Just keep in mind, finding a parking spot is the easy part. Escaping these psychopaths and making it back to your car alive? Well, good luck with that. Before we begin, I'd like to begin a new section of these videos where I read the first five comments of my last video and respond. The only rules are I won't read comments that say first or any cancerous ones because I don't have any chemo at my house. Sophie Louise says, I'm here early for once, but seriously, seeing that you'd uploaded has actually pulled me out of my depression tonight, so thank you. You're welcome, Sophie. I'm just amazed that these scary stories can help anyone with depression and things like that. But the fact that it does, I couldn't be happier about it. Amazing Gamer 10 says, OMG, GGG, 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 GG. I have a question about that. How many gods do you worship? Ned Flanders comes in with, I just finished the five hour video and this was perfect timing, well done. My timing is pretty much random. Organization is my greatest enemy these days. Kane Sevenify says, Wishmaster come true. If you ever wanted to see a scary movie about a genie, Wishmaster is for you. Just uh, putting that out there for you. And Matt Thurwell asks, scary Welsh stories sometime? Definitely, I always do videos on content that I have stories for, so if you've got a story or know someone who does, don't hesitate to send it to me. Anyway, from now on I'll be reading the first five comments in each future video and responding. Now let's get on to this scary story. This story was submitted by Anag135135. This happened back in January of 2017. At the time, I was 26 years old and eight months pregnant with my first child. I was going to one of my appointments to my OBGYN as I was required to go every week at this point. To help understand better, I live in a city in Western New York that has at least 100 inches of snow annually, and it's used to having snowstorms in January and February of each year. I also suffered from hyperemesis gravitarum, which is known as severe morning sickness. I threw up almost every day of my pregnancy, up to eight times a day some days. I was required to be closely monitored by my doctor, and I needed to go weekly to visits in the last two months of my pregnancy. Usually I went with my husband or mother. However, this time, I had to leave work and go alone. My doctor's office is located downtown, near a busy area that borders doctor's offices and small buildings, as well as a few local dive bars. There was very little street parking available nearby, so instead I used the parking garage. There were four floors to it, half underground and half above and the second floor from the ground has a bridge that connects the parking garage to the building where multiple doctor's offices were located. At this point in the day, there were about two to three inches of snow on the ground already, and even the parking garage had a bit of slush in it. And unfortunately, probably because of the snow, the parking garage was already full of vehicles. Even still, I tried to find a parking spot near the top. As I was driving around, I noticed a strange looking man standing near the staircase. He was scruffy looking, his hair was completely unkempt, and his face was very dirty. I assumed he was homeless, since it's not uncommon to find them in parking garages in the city. By some miracle, I found a spot, so I parked my 2014 Corolla S Plus, a new vehicle at the time, which is important for the story later. Then I began to head toward the elevator nearby, which is situated next to the staircase where the man had been. I pushed the button and waited for the elevator to come. 
As I waited, I hear someone talking. Their words echoed through the garage as it was so large. I ignored it, thinking it was probably someone talking on their phone. Just standing at the elevator was making me much colder than I wanted to be. It was taking forever. So instead, I decided to endure the staircase. As I'm heading down from the fourth floor to the third, I spot the scruffy looking man. He sees me and begins to talk to me right away. Mm, yeah, uh, you need to be careful now. He says to me, never taking his eyes off of my pregnant belly. Feeling awkward and a little creeped out, I reply to him, I, yeah, thank you. I'm using the railing. I was assuming he was talking about the snow and slush inside the garage. Then he says to me, mm, you know, I love pretty pregnant women. They're the best kind of women to talk to. And that's when every single red flag I had went up. I quickened my pace while holding on to the railing and my bag, but the man begins to follow me as I head down. He keeps asking me if he can walk me to the doctor's office and make sure I get my checkup because he doesn't want my pretty self to get hurt walking around. I quickly told him, no, no, thank you though, and head towards the bridge. I felt goosebumps all over me. This guy barely gave me a few inches to breathe. I could hear him behind me, extremely close, talking about escorting me and how it'd be his honor to do so. If I could just get across the bridge, it would lead me to a more populated lobby. Then out of nowhere, I feel a sharp pain on my arm. I look down and see his grubby, nasty fingers grabbing onto my arm and he's squeezing tightly, hard enough to leave bruises. Then he mutters practically in my ear, you aren't being careful, you'll hurt the baby. I tried to pull my arm away, but he was stronger than me, and it hurt extremely bad when I did so. So I just yelled at him, let go of my arm. I practically hissed. I tried to pick up my pace as much as I could, but this far in the pregnancy, the weight and the nausea had greatly impacted my stamina. Luckily, at the end of the tunnel is a security desk. I finally reach it and find an older guard startled by my walking up and seeing this scruffy man next to me talking nonstop. He looks at me and then to the man, then asks me, is he bothering you, miss? I say yes, that I don't know this man and that he's been trying to escort me to the doctor's office, even though I don't need it. The man begins yelling that I need to be careful because the weather is getting worse and that I needed a guardian angel like him to watch over me. What the heck was wrong with this guy? The guard escorts him outside and I take it as my chance to head to the doctor's office and finally I'm calming down. I've been here regularly the past few months. I get to my OBGYN, finish up my hour long appointment and nervously head back out to the garage. It had started snowing again and many of the offices were shutting down since the lunch hour had arrived. Before I cross the bridge, I check in at the lobby and I don't see the security guard. I decided that I didn't have to have someone walk with me because I'm an independent pregnant woman with a sailor's mouth, but honestly, I wish he was there to escort me. I cross the bridge and I'm back in the garage. I'm alone in the garage so far. I walk over to the elevator, press the button and begin to wait. I was not about to go up the stairs this time. As usual, the elevator is slower than molasses. I swear it doesn't even work half the time. I'm waiting there, scrolling through my phone to pass the time, when I began to hear the talking again, the same random mumbling echoing through the garage that I'd heard earlier. I hesitantly look to my right, and coming around the corner, about 50 feet away, is the scruffy man. 
He was hidden in a corner on the second floor where an SUV was parked. I couldn't have seen him coming out of the bridge, but I'd imagine he probably had a decent view looking through the vehicle windows to see me waiting at the elevator. I felt like prey. At this point, he's walking at a much faster pace, so I decide to forget the elevator. There's no time. I had to go up the stairs. The man is talking nonsense, and I'm freaking out because as paranoid as I usually am, I never imagined a scenario of being this pregnant and in this slippery parking garage with snow and slush, trapped with some psycho of a man. I reach the third floor to glance back, and I see he has started up the stairs. Quickly, I continue up to the fourth floor. I reach the top and see my car in the distance. I'm about 15 feet away from my car, when he makes the landing and starts to jog towards me. I move faster than I thought physically possible in that state. As I said before, my car is new, meaning it has remote keyless entry and push button start. This vehicle specifically has it designed so that if I have my keys in my purse, I can put my hand on the driver's side door handle and that door will unlock only that door. No need to pull my keys out at all. But if I did that to the passenger side door, all the doors would unlock. So I get to my car as fast as possible and I have to circle around even quicker to the driver's side. I make it and I slam the door close and lock everything just to be sure. This man slams himself up against the passenger side door closest to him. He's banging at the window screaming something that I can no longer hear, but I'm sure that it didn't even make sense in the first place, and I can hear him yanking at the door, trying to pull it open. I turn on my car and shift it into reverse. I yell at him to leave me alone. With the slush in the garage, there isn't much traction, so my car is barely moving along the unplowed garage. He's moving with the vehicle, continuing his rants and hitting my window, I start to move out to the fourth floor down to the third and able to get more traction. There's only one exit and even though I don't have to pay for parking, I do have to submit a ticket into a machine to be able to exit the ramp. As I approach the exit, I no longer see the man and there's no cars waiting ahead of me. So I pull up, put in my ticket and take off, putting plenty of distance between me and that psycho in the parking garage. I had to go back three more times before my son was born in February, but I went with someone each time after that, and I always refused to park in the garage again. I never encountered anyone else in my trips, but it still leaves a fear of parking garages deep inside of me. I'd rather have to walk further and find street parking than ever go back in that garage. So to the creepy parking garage guy, let's never meet again.